And if we're waiting for the government to fix our problems, prepare for permanent systemic victimization. Let me tell you something. Underdogs must fight harder, fight longer, fight smarter, and not succumb to a victim mentality. We must decide to win and not give in, give up, or give out. Victory is only handed over to an underdog after the notion of failure has been vanquished in the underdog's mind. Now, of course, when the government is allowed to pick winners and losers, all bets are off. And so goes the tale of the presidential executive order known as DEI, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. President Biden created this program, and personally, I think it's an unfunded government mandate, but it's just one guy's opinion. Whatever it is, it's been rolling out across the nation. I want to talk about it. My name is Randy Weiss. Welcome to a strange edition of Crosstalk where you'd never expect to hear about DEI. I'm actually shocked that so few people know about DEI. I guess it flew under the radar or folks aren't paying attention. When I've asked friends and family if they were familiar with the president's diversity, equity, and inclusion order, most were totally unaware of this presidential executive order. I mean, the ideas go back all the way to the civil rights movement, but this DEI plan is happening, and it seems to have been hidden in plain sight. To bring you up to speed, DEI was well intended and promised to be a pathway to success for the marginalized. Sadly, it seems to have become an unfair obstacle to some others. And though done under the guise of fairness, it can be inherently unfair. Some of us are flustered that this has been foisted on an unsuspecting public. Many Americans are getting tired of being told we're all racists and America is built on racism. That's just, it's a lie. Does anyone remember how proud we were as a nation when Americans elected an African American to the White House? President Obama campaigned as a Christian, but also loved and respected his Muslim roots. Apparently, an awful lot of Americans didn't hold his color or his love for Islam against him in the voting booths. Now, whether you were for him or against him, somehow it's just wrong to accuse America of being racist and Islamophobic. It requires one to ignore evidence to the contrary. I don't know how people can say that. No higher office exists in the nation that made him the president. Still, DEI has come to companies, colleges, and universities nationwide to make America more tolerant, less racist, less misogynistic, less homophobic, and less Islamophobic. We got all kinds of phobias that they're accusing us of. There's a reason this stuff is getting old and the rhetoric is wearing thin on many Americans. I am not a racist. A lot of us are tired of such ugly false accusations. We're tired of politicians using these tropes to guilt us into allowing Washington to walk all over us and insult our intelligence. Let's get to the point of DEI. Though they don't say it out loud, what they demand is that companies hire, promote, and show preferences to certain minorities, whether they are the best candidate or not. DEI programs falsely promise to create an environment where opportunities are fairly available to everyone. I, I heartily agree that no one should be excluded from achieving the American dream. 
I, I firmly believe that no category of folks should be treated unfairly due to skin color, religious preferences, or sexual orientation. People can be, believe, and they are who they are, and that's okay. The problem is that many East Coast and West Coast Democrats believe that straight, white, Anglo-Saxon Protestants get all the breaks. And some of these wasps need to take a step back for the benefit of others. Now, if you happen to be a highly qualified, straight, white, Christian fella climbing the same ladder, you might not want to be held back because of newly minted unfair preferences shown to people of color or sexual orientation or religion as a reverse discrimination. Gays are suddenly not only protected, they're also preferred in some cases. Christians have begun to feel that their faith is a hindrance because atheists or Muslims are preferred regardless of merit, skill, or experience. By the way, I, I find it fascinating that the only minority locked out of these DEI preferences are Jews. Why is it that we aren't considered a minority worthy of these very beneficial government-mandated programs? We comprise only two-tenths of one percent of the people. In other words, 99.98% of the world population is non-Jewish. How much smaller of a minority do we need to be to stop being accused of trying to take over the world? I don't get it. Why is racism and bigotry against Jews the only type of discrimination permitted by progressive liberal politicians and most universities. It's because nobody stops them and they continue to get away with their institutionalized hypocrisy. Look, I get it. Everyone wants a fair shot. And if you are in one of the approved protected categories and you feel you've been overlooked, you might support the DEI agenda. However, preferred has nothing to do with being qualified. And when DC levels the playing field, some better qualified people can get bulldozed. Many Americans are struggling. The economy has put large numbers of people behind the eight ball. We do have marginalized people. Some folks do need a hand up. But roadblocks to productivity are also damaging America. DEI, our president's executive order about diversity, equity, and inclusion is an impediment to excellence. And we should not exchange excellence for tolerance, especially just to be sacrificed on the altar of protecting everyone's goofball choices. I vote that we stop politicians from buying more votes from minorities, morons, and mama's boys who've never been pushed to perform to the highest levels to which they are capable. Now, I am all for not discriminating against honorable people who look different, who hold different views, who act different, but I'm definitely opposed to ignoring merit or penalizing quality people simply because they don't fit the government's view of who is deserving of extra credit. There, there's an old saying, you can't keep a good man down. In other words, eventually the cream is going to rise to the top. However, pushing good people down to pull less meritorious workers up is counterproductive. And America needs to become more productive, not more touchy-feely. Those who currently lack success need to learn to become less dependent on the government. Listen, with all the best intentions, Washington will never elevate a poor person into wealth. It will merely teach him to blame the other party for his poverty. Unless you are a government official, or your nest has already been comfortably feathered while you were nestled in your favorite government official's pocket, 
you can be certain that the government can only reduce someone else's wealth and it will always protect its own. It's not going to protect your wealth. It will take it if it can. Now, if you are one who is skilled at justifying your failures through excuses about race, religion, or alternative lifestyles, perhaps it's time for a little self-reflection. Personally, I hate sports analogies because I don't follow sports. But my best guess is that the real fans recognize that if the quarterback gets the ball into the end zone, we can probably be flexible about his, her, or its pronoun. But if his passes are regularly intercepted and he keeps fumbling the ball, it ain't his religion or his skin color that got him benched. Think about that in light of DEI initiatives. Life ain't fair. And not everyone is equal, even if Congress says they should be. The voting booth will prove that not everybody can win. In presidential elections and two-person foot races against predator predatorial grizzly bears, second place isn't usually awarded a trophy. And that is what DEI seems to overlook. Our politicians need to learn that we're in a global race against hungry, predatorial, communist, socialist, atheist, and even radical Islamist grizzly bears. America must grapple with the fact that a global race is underway and we're not winning. If we can't get it together, the competition will go to the animals. Think about running. Runners normally start a race equitably. Yet regardless of how one starts a race, it's how one runs a race that determines the outcome. Only a politician could forget that some people are just naturally faster, or they have trained harder, or they are more determined to win than those who don't. It must also be recognized that some people are born with handicaps. That is why contestants in the Special Olympics aren't expected to race against Olympians who are trained to compete at international Olympic levels. That would be a wrong, lopsided competition. Just as it would be futile to expect me to compete in the PGA. Now, I'm pretty fair at putt-putt. In fact, I kind of look like Tiger Woods when I play against my youngest grandkids, but I can't hit a golf ball off the tee. It wouldn't matter how high the handicap I was granted, I don't golf. By the way, some people handicap themselves. Then they can't understand why the government won't force everyone else to overlook their handicap. For example, if you want to compete for jobs in finance, banking, or mergers and acquisitions, you might find yourself handicapped if you've covered your social media pages with socialist propaganda, you covered your face with demonic tattoos, dyed your hair into a rainbow, filled your ears with softball-sized gauges, or stretched your lips like a ubangi. You may even identify as a binary billionaire but if you're a broke, uneducated jerk living in your mother's basement, don't expect to get that big job in finance because of your skin color, your sexual preference, or you stomp your feet and tell your congressman that life isn't fair. Dude, life is unfair, and Congress shouldn't be expected to fix your dumb life choices. Look. I understand the appeal of DEI to people who are more interested in their pronoun than their work ethic. Any new government promise that gives you something at someone else's expense probably sounds good to you. And if the politician gets your vote, that's good for them too. Until the rest of us here, we're paying for it. For example, those who love to hear politicians crying for reparations want to be a beneficiary if they can qualify. 
If a person believes they should receive a financial windfall because someone else owned slaves in the South 150 years ago, they may assume the government is passing out winning lottery tickets for your birthright. But it's a destructive delusion. If some politician is campaigning on racism, they're promising to give you someone else's money tomorrow if you vote for them today. But that's a sucker's bet. And it's not what the government is supposed to be doing. I mean, think about it. If you ever get something, they'll be back to take yours next. How else can they buy your neighbor's vote next time after they've bought yours this time? If you can't tell, I'm sour on politicians and on DEI, but I'm a Texan. Texas is sour on DEI too. In fact, Texas is tossing it out. We see it like this. Everyone deserves a fair shake, but that doesn't equate to equal outcomes. There are many areas where race, religion, or sexual preferences should never prohibit a person from fair treatment, fair compensation, or fair recognition among their peers. But neither should race, religion, or sexual orientation give them a head start or cause their peers to be handicapped. I'm going to tell you about golf, handicaps, and strange gals. I don't golf. But I know enough about it to tell you that life is not golf. In golf, the bad players get extra credit and the ladies are not expected to hit the ball as far as the gentlemen. The ladies even get their own tee, location that's closer to the hole. Well, I probably should clarify that. Um, and I probably should be careful. I am not sure I should have said this, but I'm kind of taking this as a sign. I don't golf. I haven't touched a white golf ball in 40 years. I've touched some red and yellow ones at the putt-putt. But as I was coming here to the studio, this was sitting on my lawn. <laughs> no idea how it got there, but I'm going to say it's a sign, and I'm going to say what I was going to say that I thought maybe I shouldn't say. We now live in a nation that allows fellas to pretend to be gals so they can compete against gals. Now, personally, I'm looking forward to see how the women's PGA is going to handle it when one of these confused gal fellas demands to use the ladies tee with more than one ball. There are reasons little leaguers don't bat against big leaguers. It's the same reason Pop Warner ball carriers don't get hit by NFL linebackers. Guess what? Life isn't fair and equal outcomes only occur when nobody keeps score and everyone gets a trophy. Most adults understand this. Someone needs to inform those squirrely politicians and that dude in his mother's basement that eventually they all need to grow up and get a real job and learn to compete based on competence, diligence, hard work, loyalty, and excellence. The DEI crowd needs to lose the idea that the world owes them something because they are not like everyone else. Guess what, my friend? Nobody is like anybody else. The failure here is that DEI programs don't teach us how to excel and to pull others up with us. It holds some people back, allowing others to climb over them on the way up. The diversity, equity, and inclusion agenda is the world's way of causing the unsuccessful to trust the government instead of trusting God and working like you really are the underdog in your own story. Underdogs can win, but it requires guts, gumption, and a better plan than depending on politicians. If you depend on the government, you ain't never gonna have enough. You're always gonna want more, and you'll never be satisfied 
with what you were given. That's how the government systematically develops angry, needy voters who will foolishly believe their false promises. It's time to become less tolerant and more circumspect, less inclusive and more productive. We must reward excellence, not mediocrity. DEI is doomed to fail, and so will America, if we don't awaken the woke to the international threats that we face. It's time to disable the progressive liberals before they disembowel a great nation. Now, I'll be the first in line to rail against the system that wrongly shoves people to the back of the bus. Nobody likes being relegated to the end of the line. Ask a person going through the legal immigration process how it feels to watch illegal aliens being rewarded with special privileges as they're pushed through in front of everyone else. Ask them how it feels to be bumped back yet lumped in and stereotyped with those illegals who commit heinous crimes. Honest folks, well, they know that we'll all ultimately pay for the massive amount of damage that's been caused by the border crisis. Many legal aliens understand the chaos that has been created by foolish liberal politicians who ignore the rule of law. Legal immigrants love America much more than many of the progressives elected to Congress. I wish loving America and being a patriot was a requirement for public office. But it's not. You can look at Congress and see it. To anyone who has been treated unfairly, I do have a message for you. If you have suffered betrayal or if you've been mistreated, it is unlikely that the government is going to help you. They may make promises, but the cavalry only rides in with hoofs pounding, trumpets sounding, and guns blazing in old Western movies. And the people of color were generally wiped out when they showed up. Here's a thought from the Bible. The outcomes won't be equal for everyone. So don't expect the government to do better than heaven. Jesus is the foundation upon which Christians build their lives. But how we build and the works we do will define our just rewards. We all build something at the judgment that will be clear if we built using lasting, durable materials or temporary combustibles. Are your works precious or meaningless? Are they gold, silver, precious stones? Or are they built of wood, hay? One translation says stubble, because those are the things that are going to get burned up. The Bible says each one's work will become clear. On the judgment day, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. If the work survives, that builder will receive a reward. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved. But like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. Sort of like one says they, they are saved by the skin of their teeth. To such a person, their salvation is safe in the finished work of Jesus at the cross. Their rewards, however, are dependable on how they managed their lives, their time, their resources, and even their giftings. The point is that not even heaven rewards everyone equally. Our works will be tested by heaven and judged for their value. Our rewards will also be distributed accordingly. By the way, hell will likely also have its own grading system too. If you are there, tell your progressive liberal congresswoman how you feel. She'll understand. By the way, be sure to tell the devil personally if you feel you've been mistreated. Even he deserves 
a good laugh. <laughs> My rant is over. Next time, it's all Bible, more Bible, and then some more Bible after that. Until then, my name is Randy Weiss. This is Crosstalk, and I'll never get a show opposite any CNN, Fox, or PBS news outlet. But at least, all that DEI stuff is off my chest. Sort of.